Hi. So, welcome to everyone who's joined us for uh, morning worship here at St. Anne's and St. Peter's. Um, it's my joy to welcome uh, Ella to read to us today, Barbara to lead us in prayers, uh, Natalie is in the church to lead the service, and Lou is going to be leading the worship. Uh, thank you, Lou. Thank you for standing and uh, showing yourself. Um, I believe there are lots of people in church, Natalie, who've joined us too. Yes, absolutely. Um, can we have a hello from the Smith family? <laughs> nice big loud hello. <laughs> hello. And the Williams family. <laughs> Hazel, do you want to say hello? hello. Hi, everybody. Yep, yeah, um, we're going to have hellos from Sheila and from Barbara. Hello. hello. And from uh, Lou, uh, Lou, Leon and Elaine, I'm trying to call you Lou, Leon, that's really bad, too many L's. <laughs> Francis has joined us with a lift from Elaine. Are you going to say hello really loudly so we can hear you? Hello. Hello, <laughs> Francis. And, oh, well, I'm saying hello Francis. as well. So welcome from the building of St. Peter's and the people of St. Peter's. If uh, folk who are joining us online would like to uh, sign in, I can post your comments and uh, then folk can see that you've joined too. Uh, we, there are two watching at the moment, so I expect there'll be a few more in a couple of minutes, three now. Um, so we'll be able to uh, link us all together, which is lovely. Natalie, I'm going to hand over to you now anyway. Um, oh, <laughs> well, this... this now that is that's dead clever elaine well done <laughs> elaine's elaine's here twice she's here virtually and in person and that's really just a, a help to those of us who are leading the service to know that the signal's broadcasting properly on facebook i'm going to invite lou to play for us quietly for a second or two just as we leave other people who are joining us and before we start our worship Well, it's my privilege to start our service, having welcomed and said hello to each other in person and virtually. It's lovely to begin our worship together. Let's um, begin with some words that we've been using. Some people have been using these words from home um, because they've not been able to join us. Others are using them actually in person here. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. Let's take a moment just to recognise God with each one of us now. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God now together, across the miles, and yet joined. And as we enter into that worship, we're going to begin with a beautiful hymn, Great is thy faithfulness.
Thanks, Lou. What a beautiful way to begin our worship together, to, to hum quietly here, possibly to sing loudly if you're at home. We're not at all jealous, are we? <laughs> Only slightly. <laughs> um, so I'm going to invite you to join me in saying a prayer together, which hopefully, thank you, Wendy, that's lovely. Those of you who are in the church might have noticed, um, I've lit the candles as a reminder, as a visual prompt that God is present with us now. So let's pray the words of this prayer together. <coughs> Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And it is in that light and that fire of Christ that we examine ourselves and occasionally take time to let go of the things from our week that we're less proud of. The things we've done in error, the things we've neglected to do that we could have taken the opportunity to do. So let's have a moment of silence and then pray this prayer of confession together. So we pray together. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the Father forgive us by the death of the Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. So now I'm going to invite Ella, who's going to join us remotely, to read our Bible reading. Are you ready, Ella? Yeah. I'll help you. Yeah. So, right. You speak nice and loud, okay? So the Israelites are oppressed. Okay, you start. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, go on, and now you start. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous. numerous and more powerful than we. Come and let us deal shrewdly. shrewdly with them or they will increase and in the event of war join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Speak up a little bit. Oh, what's the What's the Don't that. No, just go to the next slide. Now a man from the house of Levi. Levi went and married a Levite woman. Now the woman conceived, conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that that he was a fine baby, she hit him for three months. When she could hide him no longer. She got a um oh, I can't see that. Just a horse. Just come to the next side. Basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed. placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her Attendant walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her 
made to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity of him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, How I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So, so the girl went and called the child's mother, Pharaoh's daughter. Yes. No. Said. Said. To, to her. Take this child and nurse it for me. me. And I will give you your wages. wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. Yep, next line. Yep, right. <laughs> and? And she took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to be God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Ella, well done. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful reading. And I see Natalie standing up. Natalie, do you want to say something more at this point? No, I was just adjusting the volume because you're a tad louder than Ella. <laughs> <laughs> Ella, thank you. Do you know who Pharaoh's daughter was? She was, she was a great princess of the Egyptians. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about her and tell you a little bit about her and a bit about Moses. So thank you again for reading for us. That was lovely. So it's good to be back. I've been on sick leave for uh, four weeks now and uh, I am now finally back and able to preach and uh, sadly not in church today, but um, I will be driving soon and can get back down to church. I'm looking forward to it. So this morning we've had that lovely reading from Ella reading all about Pharaoh, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, uh, one of the great kings and his daughter. This was not a good time for the Israelite people, the children of Israel, the Hebrews were going through a terrible, terrible time. They'd grown in number, there'd been many babies born and they'd grown up and they were now beginning to threaten the Egyptians. A new king had risen, who didn't know the story of Joseph. And that's where Ella started with her story. She started talking about the new king that had had arisen and did not know that Joseph had rescued the whole of Egypt through his abilities to manage the corn and the grain and the foodstuffs in the seven years of good time, followed by the seven years of famine. So now the king is feeling threatened and the people are enslaved. They're made to do an awful lot of work for very little pay. They're making bricks to build Pharaoh's great empire. And they built his store cities, not just storehouses, store cities. I don't know whether you saw some of those pictures from Beirut of all the grain that came out of the silos that exploded in the... Um, in the uh, explosion in Beirut a couple of weeks ago. Well, Pharaoh built whole cities to store grain and foodstuffs, not just silos. And those were built by God's people. It was a time of slavery and it was a great time of fear. And that put me in mind of the fact that many of us 
or probably either ourselves or know others who find themselves full of fear and anxiety and uncertainty in this pandemic. So what has Moses, and more particularly Moses' mum, got to do with how we tackle life in a time of crisis? What did God do? How did God prepare his people for something different, something new? Well, he gave them a gift. He sent them a little baby. And this might, for some of you, ring bells. There was another time later on in history when God sent a baby to rescue his people. The first thing that happened was that Moses' mum, she's got a name, her name is Jochebed. Um, Moses' mum, Jochebed, recognised that God had sent a gift. The, the words in the Bible are, are odd. Um, and they say when, when uh, Jochebed saw he was a fine baby, um, the words there in the original uh, use the same phrase that comes in the, the creation account. God saw what he had created and it was good. He tov in, in, the, in the original Hebrew. It was good. So there's something very precious, something very lovely about this gift that God has given to Jochebed and her husband Amram and to Miriam, the older sister. This was a good baby. And they saw it. They saw this was a good gift to them, being born at a really scary time in their nation's history. And they didn't let that fear or anxiety stop them from seeing the goodness of God and the goodness of this baby. So I want to ask, I wonder who it is that God has given to you as a gift in this scary time? Because maybe there's something that God's going to ask you to do for them. Perhaps it's obvious, perhaps it's uh, members of the family but perhaps as a friend or neighbour that God just might bring to mind. Let's take a moment just to stop and ask God, who is his good gift to you for this week? Father, we do ask you to highlight who it is that you would have us bless in this coming week. Bring their name to mind. Remind us of them. Amen. So what did Jochebed do? It was that scary time, and it was such a scary time because this new king had determined to kill all the children, all the baby boys. What a terrible, terrible thing. Perhaps even more scary than it is for us today. So what Jochebed did was she looked at what she had around about her. She obviously lived near a river and in, those, in that river grew some great bulrushes, some reeds. And she took them and she wove a little basket. It was a basket made of papyrus. It's a difficult word to say, isn't it, Ella? Papyrus. It's the sort of word that um, gives us the basis for our name, paper. So it was reeds that they eventually learned how to make into paper. These reeds could be woven together. And when you put pitch and al al uh, bitumen on the top of them, it made them completely a completely waterproof little basket. And that basket's name, it's only ever used in one other place in the whole of the Old Testament. And that is for the ark. It's the same word, teva in Hebrew. I've enjoyed over the time I've had off dipping into my Hebrew Bible. You can tell, can't you? So this little ark, this little basket was a place that Jochebed placed Moses to keep him safe, to keep him hidden, to nurture her son, to keep him away from the king's prying eyes. 
how can you nurture the person that God might have brought to mind? This gift of a person that God's given to you. Well, I was thinking about maybe being a person of safety or a person, a place of safety. You know what it's like when you go to your favorite aunt or uncle or you spend time with somebody who always loves you and gives you wise words and listens well to you. Somebody who's always on your side and always thinks the best of you. Somebody who offers you hospitality. Somebody maybe who offers you cake. Somebody who will pray with you, for you. Maybe God is asking you to be that person for someone else, to nurture them, to help them. I asked uh, Tess, who has recently had uh, little Asha. Asha is now five weeks old and born in the middle of the pandemic, in the, in the middle of lockdown. And I asked her what it was like for her and what parallels could she see between what she had gone through and what um, was happening for Jochebed and Moses. And she said, I found COVID to be an anxious time and a difficult time to navigate, especially as the res restrictions have relaxed. No one can control this disease. And I've worried about what actions to take to keep the boys, that's Asha and Freddie, as safe as possible, paralleling Jochebed. At a time when friends and family would normally gather around, it's been a solitary experience that, that rather than uh, many would, including myself, would not choose. Scans, appointments and staying in the hospital after the birth were all times I was alone, with Richard not allowed to join me. There have been many times that the only control has been to pray and to have faith. She goes on, I can only imagine how Jochebed felt during Pharaoh's rule, scared to be pregnant, anxious, worried, and having no control to change the situation. She must have felt utter desperation, and she must have acted on pure faith, putting all her trust and hope in God to take the action she took with her son. And that's the final thought. I want to leave with you. When God's given us a gift, when we spent time encouraging that person, being there for them, speaking to them, listening to them, being for them, we need to continually lift them back to God and trust God with them. Jochebed and Amran placed Moses amongst the rushes trusting God with the outcome. They'd done all they could think of, and now they let their little gift of Moses go. They handed him back to God. Have you handed your gift back to God? We need to stay open-handed because relationships may last a lifetime, but sometimes they're just for a season or even just for a day or an hour. And we need to be open-handed and not be worried when we're separated for a time. The joy at the end of this story, this part of the story is that God then handed Moses back to his mother and she was able to care for him uh, through his uh, childhood. So we're in this time of pandemic. What can we do? How can we bring hope? Well, we can be that place of safety, a nurturing place for those gifts that God has given us. Keep looking out for who it is God wants you to invest in, for you to nurture and encourage, and ask for wisdom to know how to do that. What small things can you do with things that are just around you that might bless the person who's come to mind. And then take time to thank God and trust him with this gift. And you never know, you might be blessing a Moses who will lead our nation in a new way. Let's pray.
Father, thank you for opening our eyes to those around us who you would have us nurture. Help us this day and through this week to bless and encourage those gifts that you have given to us, that we may offer them back to you for your glory. Amen. Thank you. And now I'm going to return you to Natalie. Thank you. Thanks so much, Wendy. It's lovely to think of people that we come across as a gift, isn't it? A gift of an opportunity to connect with them and to serve them, to support them and love them. And in just the same way, God gave us a gift in Christ and we're going to affirm our faith in Jesus now as Wendy brings up the words on the slide for us. So let's say these words together. Though he was divine, he did not cling with, to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And it's to this Jesus that we bow the knee as Barbara leads us in our time of prayer. Father, firstly, we want to thank you for Wendy's uh, return to us and for her words this morning. May they indeed be embedded in us so that we might give glory to your name through the people that you give us to help and to nurture and to love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. Lord, be with all the leaders of the nations. Give them the courage and strength to make good decisions for the benefit of their people. We also pray for our government and scientific people who are seeking to find a vaccine. But we also pray for the people of our nation that they may behave sensibly so as not to spread the virus through crowding together. Help us to show love to one another in a different way that will encourage us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all our teaching staff as they prepare to reopen the schools. Help them to put in place all that is required for the new term to begin and for the children to feel secure after such a long absence. Be with all those who are taking the 11 plus in November and for all students who are preparing to start work on their A-levels and GCSEs and others starting university for the first time. May our children feel valued and able to pick up all they need to in the coming months and years. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray for those who are unwell and for those who are suffering, for all in the nursing homes and hospices of our parish, and for those who are housebound. We remember all who are sick, and especially lift before you Roly in hospital and Francis, his wife, for Mick in a care home, and for Barry as he awaits surgery. And we also want to remember Michael's father, John, seriously ill in hospital, and Elizabeth, his wife, who has been caring for him. May John be given the opportunity to see his new grandson, Joshua. 
relieve any distress they and their families are experiencing at this time. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you know our hearts and share our sorrows. We are hurt by our parting from those whom we have loved. And we especially remember those who have lost loved ones recently. For Janet and her family, the loss of Gareth. And we pray this morning also for Maggie and Charlotte and Helen for the loss of Rob. Maybe we feel some anger at the loss we have sustained when we long for words of comfort, yet find them hard to bear. Turn our grief to truer living, our affliction to firmer hope. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Lord has taught us, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Barbara. That's beautiful. Um, we're going to sing together next. Um, Lou's going to lead us in The Lord's My Shepherd. So um, for those of you who are here, you might want to hum. And um, for those of you at home, you can uh, sing it out loud.
you know, it does feel a little like coming home in a fresh way, doesn't it? Um, as we return to our buildings and begin to learn what this new way of worshipping together looks like with some online and I can smile at them through the camera and some here in the building. It's, it's unusual and it's different. And I'd like to make a personal thanks to all of you who've tried so hard to engage at this time and, and connect with these fresh ways of worshipping. For In a way, you are those people of comfort to the ministry team because you allow us to serve you in fresh and new ways. The did it difficult and challenging for us. We had a technical glitch just before we went live this morning where we couldn't hear Wendy. And I was just imagining having to make up her preach and I'm grateful that I didn't because what she said was much, much deeper than I would have got to in a second or two. So thank you all so much for all you're doing. For those people who watch the service later because they prefer YouTube, um, you're a beautiful community and you've loved and supported each other really graciously over this time. So thank you for that. I've got more thank yous to say as well. Um, we put out a request for some gardening help and Dawn and Hazel have kindly tidied up the bit of the garden that Michael um, and um, Cassie hadn't, thank you, hadn't quite reached um, down at St Anne's. Um, Pat's been out with her clippers tidying up the car park. We've got a patch now between the hall, uh, the, our church building here and the garage. If anyone fancies tackling that, that would be amazing. And um, Helen helped me out. We're all ready to move back and start Blast again because the cupboard behind this screen is now beautifully tidy with loads of resources um, and full of things for when we're ready to welcome Blast and, and young people's work back. So thank you all so much for your contribution and your support. Um, one thing I'd like to ask you to do in our notices, if you haven't got it in your diary already, it's, um, there's a provisional date for the APCM that's likely to happen on the 20th of September. So um, do note that in your diary. It, it normally happens straight after church. Um, we're still working out what that might look like. We're chatting with the PCC about whether we have it in person or in the building. A few logistical things to tackle there, but please do keep your date in your diary. And if you'd like to be part of the PCC, part of the community, help lead and support the church, and that hasn't been something you've done previously, then please do, people online or people here, let us know. Um, we'd love to have you join us in supporting the church work. Um, there's one other notice to give you. Um, we've been sent a, um, or Wendy's been sent an email by the local community saying there have been a couple of localised cases of um, the virus. I've looked up online where they are. They weren't lost. They weren't this week just gone, they were the previous week and they were down in March, there were only three. Um, but just a reminder to us all to be particularly attentive to our hygiene and our discipline. I'm looking, for those of you who are online, I'm looking at a congregation all with face masks, smiling back at me with their eyes. Um, this is a safe place to worship if you wish to join us. Um, but just a reminder from the local council to attend to those disciplines as you're out and about during life beyond worship. I think those are all the notices, unless there's anything I've forgotten. I'm looking at Elaine. Wendy will chip in if she wants to. Um, we're going to move into our communion time of the service. For those of you who um, might need to dash off, who are online, I'm just going to say a brief prayer and then we'll flow into the communion service. Faithful God, may we who have shared this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love. As you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And so for those who are able to continue with us, we're now going to move on to passing the peace. I'm just going to try and set this camera so it can see the communion table and not chop off my head. Lou, do you mind adjusting if I've got that deeply wrong? Thank you. So can everyone remember how we do the peace? Yeah, so the peace is that bit and with you is that bit. So wherever you are, peace with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
So please throw a piece around the room. <laughs> I know you physically can't hug people, but you can pass them the piece. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's lovely. And let's gather around the Lord's table, shall we? The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross and put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the miss. Oh, sorry. I'll just... In remembrance of me, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come okay. again. Should we try that again? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't lead that terribly well, did I? Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for all the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption and we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Peter, St. Anne and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
the body of Christ broken for all of us. Thank you, Lou. So I'm going to invite Wendy to put up the post-communion prayer that we're going to say together as part of our worship. Hopefully. <laughs> Let's say this prayer together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so the peace of God which passes all understanding be upon you and remain with you now. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest in your hearts throughout this day and this week. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for worshipping with us. It's been a privilege and honour to be with you this morning. I think Wendy's going to say a farewell to those online um, and going to conclude our service online. I'm just going to disconnect the loudspeaker so that those of us who are here in the building to include our worship together as much as those who are online can finish the worship together. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks, Wendy. Well done, everyone. Thank you for um, being part of the service. I can still hear me in the um, church. I hope they can't. That was a tricky reading, Ella, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Perhaps I um, get, get Mummy to, to show you some of the ancient Egyptian kings. There's lots of, of exciting history things you can learn about. Hi, Alex. Alexander, what have you got? A toy phone. You've got a toy phone. Oh, so yeah. you're going to be able to see it. 
Not in the Is it is it make me do it? Okay, Alexander, wait, wait. Alexander, can you do a big wave to everybody? Is that with your hands? Good boy. Well, thank you so much for um, for helping out. It's been lovely. Um, well, I'll be in touch with you sometime. When would be a good good time for you and me to have a phone call? Are you Val? Oh, yeah. Um, well, uh, any time really, apart from this week, because we're going away. Okay. When are you going? We're going on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Yeah. Okay. Can I can I give you a phone call on Monday? Yeah, That'd that's fine. Yeah. Oh, um, good. Could you just send me a text first? Just because I've got a couple of appointments on Monday. Um, just send me a text. To let me know the time. Um, what would be good for you? So, when can you take that take out the live broadcast? Yes. <laughs> that's better. Well done, Barbara. <laughs> I might send a message. <laughs> Um, so I'm just thinking, what time? Once he's uh, maybe in the morning, um, around sort of tennis, would that be okay? Yeah. Alexander will be at nursery then. Um, yeah, that'd be okay. Passion. I'll give you a ring then. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Um, and Barbara, when am I seeing you? Oh, not until um, November, uh, end of September. Because <laughs> I'm You're going off. next week. <laughs> Um, apparently, we're still broadcasting. Let's end the broadcast. <laughs>